Level up your brow lamination results with this step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm a professional brow artist and in this guide I've included all the details to help you create perfect textured eyebrows for your clients. Watch to the end for more amazing before and after treatment results. Right, let's get started. Preparation. We start by cleansing the brows and surrounding area thoroughly. I love to use this brow shampoo from Lash Glow. It's a very gentle formula and doesn't contain sulfates or parabens. This means it won't dry out the brow hairs or skin, but it does an amazing job at melting away makeup. This is my lovely client Natasha. I've been doing her brows for over six years and she alternates between my signature brow treatment and a lamination. Today I'm double cleansing Natasha as she's got makeup on and through the brows. So the first cleanse helps to remove the makeup and then the second cleanse will remove any residue from the surrounding area. If you have any questions as you watch the brow lamination tutorial, please let me know what they are in the comments and I'll get back to you. So this different angle is showing you the second cleanse that I did. I use the same process as the first time around. I apply one pump of the Lash Glow Foam to a clean cotton pad and then pick up some of the solution with my mascara spoolie. I then gently brush and massage the shampoo throughout the brow. I then take a cotton pad with cleanser on it to fully remove makeup. You want to be really, really thorough at this stage. You don't want anything on the brows that could affect your treatment results. I'll then take a cotton pad and dry the brows. The brows have to be completely dry before starting with the first step of the lamination process. I use the May Amy three-step brow lamination system and I do choose not to pre-glue the brows. I start by applying the brow lift solution from the root to the tips of the brows, ensuring I have a really good coating and coverage over the entire brow. You don't need to worry about the shape or how the hairs are sitting at this stage, you just need to get an even coating worked into the eyebrow. Work as quickly as you possibly can at this stage. I aim for 30 seconds per brow to get a really good even coating. The brow lift or step one in the treatment is intended to break down the bond structure in the eyebrow hair. This then allows the hairs to be gently manipulated and designed into a revised shape. Once you have a good coating all over the brows, you want to cover the brows in a film. I like to use one piece per brow so that when I come to check the hairs later, I don't have to lift too much away. Plus, I find the more I use, the more I get in a bit of a tangle. You want to refer to the brow lamination system you use for development times. May Amy is six to 15 minutes depending on hair density and Natasha sits in their normal range, which is eight to 10 minutes. At the six minute mark, I like to check to see how the hairs are relaxing. I do this by lifting the film and taking a micro pore brush to stroke the hairs to see how malleable they are. Natasha's brows are relatively dense and normal thickness, so I leave the lifting cream on for eight minutes in total. Now we're ready to reshape the brows. I personally love to use a dental brush for this step. I've tried lots of different products to create the shape of the brow, but this is definitely my favorite. I use the brush to create a lifted sweeping effect for the most flattering eyebrow shape. As I brush the hairs into position, the tool also begins to pick up and remove the brow lift cream. I continue to work the brow hair until it's in a really flattering, lifted, fluffy haired state. If you're learning lots and taking away tips to create better brow lamination treatment results, it would be great if you could give the video a like by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing with friends who you think would like to see this step-by-step -step guide. Then I take these cosmetic buds from Boots with a flat end to remove all traces of the lift product. I'll use quite a few to make sure that all the product is gone. Once all of the brow lift 
product has been cleaned away from the brows, you then want to neutralize the eyebrow. To do this, take a lightly damp cotton bud and apply it across the brow shape in the way that you removed the brow lift product. It's a really important step to make sure you neutralize the brows because otherwise they'll continue to develop and could become overprocessed. I then take a dry cotton pad and wipe over the brows to remove any remaining moisture or residue. Next, we want to set the brows into their new position and we do this by using step two in the May Amy system called Sculpt. I recommend using lip gloss applicators to apply all three stages of the May Amy system. I remove some of the product from the pot with the applicator and place it on the back of my glove. The lip wand won't soak up any of the product so you're not going to end up with loads of wastage. I then scoop the product up with the lip wand when needed and I just personally find this a much easier way to work rather than trying to hold the bottle and get a new applicator every time I need some more lotion or cream. You want to make sure you have a really good coating of this sculpt lotion. It's the step that's going to set the hairs into their new position. So every single brow hair must be coated. Personally, I always find more is better in this step. I'd rather waste and use too much product than not enough. With the May Amy system, you leave the second solution on for the same amount of time as you did when you used the lift product. So for example, with Natasha, we left the lift on for eight minutes and therefore it's eight minutes for the sculpt step. I then remove the product with clean cotton pads following the new direction of the hair so that you don't mess up the shape. You always want to apply a firm but gentle pressure. This will help keep the shape in place. Next, I tint the brows and I'm using the HD Brows Tint and Developer today in Dark Brown. Always discuss with your client what colour they would like to achieve with their brows as part of your consultation. During the lamination, it can be typical to notice discoloration of the hair. Often they'll lighten or become very warm in tone. So even if your client doesn't want to darken their brows, you would need to make a tint colour that matches the natural shade to help neutralise discoloration. The brow hair is very porous from the lamination treatment, so tint colour will develop faster than normal, so keep a close eye on how the shade is developing. Apply the tint from root to tip and be as accurate as possible when you tint to avoid staining the skin and leaving a messy, undefined finish to the brows. Once the brow hair has reached the right colour, I then like to remove the tint in sections. I'll always remove the front part of the brow first, just to help create a nice natural finish. I then take dry cotton pads to remove the remaining tint. Always ensure you're following the new direction of the hairs when you're removing tint. A gentle but firm pressure helps keep the hairs in place and avoid dragging the tint across the skin as this will leave a smudgy, undefined finish. After you've removed all the tint, use a very small amount of tint stain remover on a cotton bud to stop the tint from developing any further. If you miss this step, the brow colour could continue to get darker and darker. I then take a dry cotton pad to remove any moisture or residue. I now apply a light layer of powder below the brows to create a barrier. This helps protect Natasha's skin when I wax. This is due to her personal skincare routine, which is discussed at consultation before the treatment. Now we're ready to wax the brows. I'm using a warm cream wax applied with a long manicure stick. I take a small amount of wax on the tip and distribute it a couple of mil below the brow line. Towards the tail of the brow, I begin to twist the stick to follow the natural curve of the brow. 
I then push the wax upwards towards the brow to create a super crisp finish. I take small strips of wax paper, place over the wax, firmly hold the skin taut and remove. You always want to apply wax in the direction of hair growth and remove the wax in the opposite direction. I personally like to remove in three sections. So here you can just see a little bit better how I'm twisting that wax stick once I get towards the tail of the brow. It just distributes the wax a little bit easier following that natural shape. And again now, just removing in three sections, firm pressure, gently hold the skin and remove. After waxing, I apply a post wax oil to soothe the skin and remove any residue. I'll then clean up with a dry cotton pad. If you found this tutorial helpful, I'd be really grateful if you could give the video a like and consider subscribing as I'll have more tutorials coming soon. I then perfect the brow shape where necessary by tweezing out any remaining unwanted hairs. I absolutely love brow lamination because it's such a flexible treatment. It can correct unruly, coarse eyebrow hair. It makes brows look thicker and fuller. It can give shapes more symmetry and I just really like the texture and the finish. And now we're at the final step of the May Amy system and that's to nourish the brows. It's actually called brow essence, um, but I actually refer to it as the oiling stage. I take a dappen dish and I actually turn it upside down and pop a couple of drops of oil in the top and then apply again with one of the lip gloss ones. I apply it all the way through the brow to make sure it's got a good coating. I then take a micro pore brush and work the oil into the eyebrow. This is the final step to really perfect the shape of your lamination treatment. You want to make sure that you get all those hairs really nicely flat and smooth and sitting in the position that you ultimately want them to be in. Once again, you want to apply a firm but gentle pressure to the brows. And again, just from the top angle now, you can see working that oil into the brow and perfecting that shape, getting the hairs to sit really, really smoothly and flat against the skin so that they can set in their new position. I always advise clients not to get their brows wet for at least 24 hours.
and just some final tweezing to perfect the shape and then just cleaning up around the brow area. And now, as promised earlier in the video, here are Natasha's results. Her brows look fuller and thicker, and it's a really lovely, flattering shape. I find with the May Amy system that the brow lamination tends to last, on average, eight weeks. So what do you think of Natasha's results? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more brow, beauty, hair and skin content. Thank you so much for watching.